Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today is uh, <coughs> Sunday, November 3rd, and um, we have, two th we have a, a few things that we do. We've been uh, ministering on the day of the Lord. Last week, we talked about deception. Last week, we talked about deception, and um, we're going to continue on that. Uh, I'm going to do a brief recap, but first, I want to make sure that you're ready for the day of the Lord. And the way to do that is by the covenant that you enter into, like the commitment that you into, enter into. Our fathers let you know his commitment by sending his son. Amen. His son came here and, and lived and died, was tortured, and he rose again on your behalf, on our behalf. Yeah. Not just yours, but on mine as well. And as a result, I accepted that. That's how you get prepared for the day of the Lord, by accepting the free gift of his life for you, and then you switch your life for his. Your life isn't that good if it's going to be messed up when the day of the Lord shows up. Amen. It's going to be way better when he's in, intersected into your life or interspersed into your life. By how? By listening to his word, getting around other believers, by, um, by not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. And uh, so what you need to do if you've just made a commitment to accept the Messiah as your Lord and Savior, to accept God as your Father, then you need to start to read his word so you can find out the rules of his kingdom or, or our constitution, because we're from a heavenly kingdom. So our constitution, you need to read the Bible and get around people who also teach the Bible. So that's how you do that. So um, I'm going to also uh, just say one couple things. Um, I want to say something about the election because it's coming up. Here's the thing about the election. And uh, somebody's going to be disappointed because they think I'm going to, you know, endorse someone, but I'm not. What I'm going to endorse is that uh, you you listen to the Lord. That's all. Because you don't, listen, just, I can't assume that this is who you're supposed to vote for. You're not supposed to vote for who I'm supposed to vote for. You're supposed to vote for whoever the Lord tells you to vote for. Amen. And uh, so that's really my, my admonition is, but make sure you, like, for example, um, uh, Primero. Escuche al Espíritu Santo. First, listen to the Holy Spirit. Segundo, vaya con Dios. Go with God. Those two things. That's my admonition. Whatever you do, because we think we know. We don't know what what Father's will is. Like He may have something in store for the, for our country based on who goes in. You know what I'm saying? Like He may want a certain person in. We don't know that. And now I know my preference and all the other stuff, but my preference is even when I go in there, I'm still going to pray. And if he tells me somebody different, guess what? That's what I'm going with. Amen. Seriously. Amen. You know, you don't, we think we know, but that's why we listen to the Holy Spirit. You have people going back and forth, clapping back and everything. My thing is, hey, nobody knows the will until the Holy Spirit tells you what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. So that's my admonition. And, but here's what we're going to do. So that's that's day. That's election day. The day after election day, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray for whoever was elected. That's right. Amen. 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 That's how we roll. Yes. Amen. So I got that out there. Everybody happy now? Amen. <laughs> I know it's probably people in in YouTube land and Zoom land thinking, oh, he's going to endorse somebody. <laughs> yes, I'm endorsing the Holy Spirit. Yes. There you go. <laughs> yes. Endorsing you to listen. To the Holy Spirit, let him tell you what to do. That's because right. like I said, um, we've been talking about the day of the Lord, but I'm, let me just share this. This kind of, and I wasn't really planning on this, but this kind of segues into it a little bit. Is um, we've been, Last week we were talking about deception, and we're going to talk about that a bit more today. But I was sharing with you that the uh, the world has had this version or this vision of, of who the children of Israel are, the, the children from the, the lineage, not the children that practice Judaism, but the children from the lineage. Those are, they, they can be two different things, and they are, but they're two different things. Um, I said last week uh, that um, just because you're Catholic does not mean you originate from Italy. And you can be from Italy and not be Catholic. Just because you're a Muslim does not mean you originated from Saudi Arabia. You can be from Saudi Arabia and not be a Muslim. But for some reason in our world, just because you say you're Jewish, you automatically are assumed to originate from Israel. And so that's what I want to disabuse you of that today. But um, there's, um, there, and I shared last week a, a couple of things, and I think we may do a brief recap. But I, this is still, in, since I'm on this train of thought, um, you know, we talk about um, 
you know, there's a scripture in Genesis 12 where it says that, uh, it says, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse of thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And we take that and we, we run with it. He's talking to Abraham. That's singular. He says, I will bless you. And, I, and curse him the curse of you. That's a singular thing, but we take it to mean, oh, we got to bless Israel. And I'm not saying you don't. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is we <coughs> take that as a promise, and this is we, because we heard that. And so we take that as a promise. So, so we've been, uh, Israel was, um, became a nation in 1948, a, 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 a nation, not a, not a people. Uh, when I say a people, they weren't necessarily a people that were from the lineage of, of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and I shared that with you before. As a matter of fact, I shared before that um, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, his last name before his grandfather changed it was Milikowski because he was from Poland. And yet now it's, it's Netanyahu. And his son's DNA had happened to be leaked on the internet and it showed that his, his son, Benjamin Netanyahu's son, Yair, his, his DNA only went back to Poland and Germany, so, which means the father's, his father brought his DNA along with, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't say that correctly, but, but what I'm trying to say, yes. and I'm not, I'm not down in what I'm saying is they're, they're Jews. That's what they are. They, they converted to Judaism. To Judaism, that didn't mean, that didn't mean they were, like, for example, if I convert to Catholicism, I'm no, I'm, that doesn't mean I'm Italian. That's really what I'm saying. Okay. So we need to we need to go along with it. And so think about this. So w the world has been giving us this 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 cue to we got to bless Israel. We got to bless Israel. And if you've ever read the Talmud and saw the things that it talks about the Messiah, the things because they're going they're not going with the word the Torah. They're going with the Talmud, which was the oral law that they made up. The rabbis that had arguments and they said this is the, <laughs> this is what we're going by. But Yahweh said this is my word. Mm -hmm. yes. And so we go by His word. He also said, this is how you identify my people. Yes. And we talked about that last week in Deuteronomy 28, 45, yes. and 46. He says, it will be a sign upon you forever. And he said, these, these curses, that these curses will be a sign. It says, you'll be a byword. People will call you a certain name. <coughs> that happen to anybody? Mm -hmm. So there's some things. And so, so I'm, I'm, you're saying, why am I bringing this up? Because we're talking about blessing Israel. So, let, so Israel became a nation in 1948. And it says in Isaiah 66, it says, Will a nation, a nation was born in a day? Isaiah 66. I think it's verse 8 or somewhere around there. Will a nation be born in a day? And people gravi they gravitate to that. Forgetting that there was a Balfour Declaration in 1917 where they asked, petition Lord Rothschild for land, right? And then, so they didn't become a nation until 1948. That does not sound like a day. Yahweh said, I'm going to bring you. He didn't say the Rothschild or England is going to give you a nation. He said, I will bring you into your land. So, we're, so ever since 1948, so let's see how blessed we've been. Since 1948, we had the North Korea War. We had the Vietnam War. We had the Iraq War. We had the Afghanistan War. We had the Cold War. We had the War on Poverty. The War on Crime. We kicked uh, God out of our schools. We kicked the Bible out of our schools. We've got the alphabet community taking prominence. We've got abortion where we've killed over 70 million people. But we're blessed. Because we've been blessed in Israel. We are blessed. And that's why you look now. And then, okay, I'm going to tell you this too. I'm, this is me. So, so you know what to take this. But there's over 350 million legal people in this country. Just say about 150 million of them are adults. Voting adults. So out of 150 million people, voting adults, the two candidates we have now are the best we have out of 150 million people. The odds of me being on the U.S. Olympic team is greater. So we're so blessed because we've been blessing Israel. Yet we've been cursing the people that look like the Messiah. I said that last week in Romans, I mean Revelation 1, 15, Revelation 2, 9, 3, 9, and 4, 1. So we're going to read that real quick because this is part of the, re of the recap. Revelation chapter 4. And again, I, like I said, you can convert. That doesn't mean you're, you're from the, um, the people. You know, you, but Exodus 12, I'll, I'll read that as well. Exodus 12, 45 through 49. It talks about those that convert. They're to be treated just like anybody else. But there's a, there's a bloodline that, that, that the Father follows, isn't it? Yeah, let me, mm -hmm. let me just slow down. I'm going to read Revelation chapter 1 real quick. Verse 15, 14 through 15, I'll read. 
This is uh, John. He says, uh, in verse 13, he says, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, that would be the Messiah, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about with the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burned in the furnace. See, it was okay if it was at just fine brass, they could be shiny, but if it's burned in the furnace, it starts to look more like me. So he's talking about what the Messiah looks like. Is burned in the, in the furnace. Let's turn to the next chapter 2. So think about what I'm going to read these next two verses in, in chapter 2 and 3. Think about sandwiched in between this. The, chapter 1, it shows that what the Messiah looked like, kind of like me, as far as his, his skin tone. Burned brass, burned in the fire. Now he said in 2 9, it says that, talking to the church this morning, he says, he says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Now take those, that's in parentheses. Who's rich? It surely ain't the people that look like me. I'm talking about as a, as a whole. Right? He says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, parentheses, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are in the synagogue of Satan. Let's turn, so remember first chapter one, we just saw that his feet was, his was like burnished bronze, burnt in the fire. Let's turn to chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy face, feet and know that I have loved thee. Now this could be a lie if I'm telling you that I'm from the bloodline and I'm not. And if, uh, for example, I shared last week, there was an article in the Nature magazine in 2013 uh, that talked about the Ashkenazi, and it says that the majority of them are from Europe, the majority. So now if they're saying they're from a certain place and they're not, they could be lying. Again, I'm not saying they are, I'm just saying, because it's not, that's, that's not my job. My pay, my pay grade is to believe. That's my pay grade. But, I'm, but I find it interesting that the first chapter shows that he looks like me. Let's turn to chapter, and then between, between this next chapter four, Let's read these two verses, 2 9 and 3 9, says that there's some people that, that have lied. Or, or there's some people that have lied. Uh, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and sardine stone, and there was a rainbow about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, they had on their heads crowns of gold. If you look at, it's talking about the one who sat on the throne was like jasper and a sardine stone. I've showed you what they look like. So isn't it interesting that sandwiched between the two, the two chapters or verses where people who are lions and they are Jews, sandwiched around that is what the Messiah looks like and what the Father looks like and it happens to look like, like this. Now I'm not preaching the gospel of color, but I'm, I'm preaching and teaching based on what the word says. See, it says, here's, like I said last week, people would, would know the Messiah based on the word because he's the living word. Yeah. And this word says, the word, he says, look, he says, this is how you determine my people. He says, he's describing the people. I talked about real ID. And I said, and let, I'm going to turn to it real quick since I mentioned Deuteronomy 28. We'll read it so that you will know that I'm telling the truth. Again, we're talking about deception. Verse 45 and 46. And now, 45 and 46, this is, this is more of a summation, summation of everything, but if you look at all these curses from verse 15 on, the curses are when they don't obey Yahweh. People who are following oral law, but not his word, are not obeying Yahweh. The oral law is the Talmud. Who did your Messiah have the most problem with when he came? It was the people who were following the oral law, the religious people, the Sanhedrin. That's who he was having a problem with. He wasn't having a problem with the people, the Essenes, who were following the word, who were expecting him. They knew he was coming because they followed the word. Verse 45, it says, he says, so 
All these curses came upon them. That's why they were out of the land, because they weren't following the law, or we weren't following the law. Verse 45. And let me just, again, I, I said, I'm going to read this too in Exodus 12, 45, so I'll go back to that in a second. But verse 45. It says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Because, so your, your nation's going to be destroyed. Because thou hearken not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. It's written down. It's not what you verbalize. In verse 46 it says, And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed for a little while. See, that would have been okay to identify them however we want it if we didn't have those last two words, forever. Is there anybody who has fit these curses, not on purpose, but because of spiritual law? You think people that look like me wanted to be cursed? No. Although our forefathers in Matthew, when they said, when Pilate said, he said, he said, I'm washing my hands of your blood, of his blood. And he said, his blood be upon us and upon our children. Mm -hmm. yeah. Start Exodus chapter 12. I'm kind of going a little different than I was expecting to, but we'll go there. Exodus 12. Exodus 12, verse 45. And you know, it's, it's kind of uncomfortable when I start talking like this to people because, see, I've been studying this for over eight years. And so I know. And plus, I talked to the Holy Spirit. I talked to Father. And he showed me some things. And, and he showed me in advance. He told me, he said, the number one thing, like I said, is, is to, uh, to walk in love. He said, you got to walk in love with what you're going to learn because you're going to be find out that people have disappointed to you, uh, disappointed you, people have lied to you, people have lied to you, people have deceived you. And you got to love people. you got to forgive See, the scripture says, and like I said, and, and I'm going to read this, but this isn't the scripture I'm talking about, but the, the Ten Commandments, of, the second commandment was to not make any graven image of things in heaven. Yeshua is in heaven. But yet we have graven images of Yeshua. We have pictures of, of Yeshua, sculptures of Yeshua, and for some reason they don't match up with the word that we found in Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, that his skin was like burnished bronze. For some reason, the, when we went against, when I say we, I'm the rhetorical we, when we went against the word which says, do not make any graven images, for some reason when we went against the word, we didn't follow the word. We took our own thing, and it says in 1 first, um, in, uh, in first Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48, it says, and they laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Let me say that again. 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48 says, And they laid open the book of the law. What's the book of the law? Yahweh's word. So they laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen, the heathen were the people that weren't the people, mm -hmm. and they had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Mm -hmm. Interesting that the book of Maccabees is no longer in the Bible. It's the Apocrypha. It's outside of it now. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 12. Wasn't planning on going this way, but this is where we are. Verse 45. It says, A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth all of the flesh that brought out of the house. Neither shall you break a bone thereof, and all the congregation of Israel shall keep it. But listen to this, verse 48. It says, And when a stranger or a foreigner or a heathen shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover of the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. So basically, follow the law. When they, if they follow the law, then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. So you will be just, you will be a, just like in, in, in what we call Christianity. It says if you belong to, to Christ, you're Abraham's seed and an heir according to the promise. So I'm not talking a, a, a doctrine of exclusion, of, ex, of, of exclusivity. What I'm saying is, is it's inclusive. It's inclusive. But there's also a bloodline. We're going to read that in Isaiah 11. But let's finish this. It says, it says, um, and when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, let us be circumcised. Verse. It says, um, and he shall be as one that is born in the land. I'm still reading in verse 48 near the end. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Anybody who's outside of, of what I've commanded can't eat it. But if you're in it, you can. In verse 49, it says, one law shall be to him that is homeborn, comma, 
and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Which stranger? The one that has been circumcised and is following the law. So they can be included. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But that's not what the Talmud says about strangers and, and people. But let's go on. That, again, I'm just saying that's a verbal thing instead of a written thing. There's a lot of moving parts, I said before, about the last day. And, uh, and it was at Isaiah 66, verse 9, 6 through 9, when I was talking about a nation being born in the day. Um, we're going to get to Isaiah chapter 11, but, and, and, but I want to talk, turn to Genesis 38. Don't turn yet. Since we're here in uh, Exodus 12, let's just read this real quick, verse 40. This is what happened. This is, we're talking about deception a little bit. I mean, not a little bit. We're talking about deception the last days. And so verse 40 of, of Exodus chapter 12 says, Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the self day, same day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. And people grabbed that 430 years. They grabbed that. But however, I shared before, that there is a, a change in this scripture, in this verse. Because if you look at the older version, the, uh, the Samaritan Pentateuch, the, uh, the um, uh, what's the other one? It's something over the land, I don't remember. But anyway, they, the, the, the Greek Septuagint and the Samaritan Pentateuch, both of them show the original version. As a matter of fact, when, if you turn to Galatians chapter 3, verse 17, Paul says the same thing about this verse. And he says that, um, since we're here, I'll just go real quickly. 3.17. He says that, um, this is Paul, he says, and, and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed, confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot dis disin all, that it should make the promise of none effect. So Paul's mentioned that same time frame. And the covenant was to Abraham, who was not in Egypt. So that, that, that thing is kind of wrong. We need to go with the word and not what we've heard. If Paul is saying the same thing that the original text says. Matter of fact, depending on what version you look at, there'll be a note that says, and it'll say the original said this, or it'll say what the Greek of Septuagint said, said this. And Paul, for some reason, who was closer to this time frame than us, is talking the same way about 430 years, from the covenant to the promise, or from the promise to the law. Amen? Amen. So I'm always going to go with the, uh, the word and not what I've heard people say things. Because when I started seeing the scripture, and I said, wait a minute, what's this footnote here? And why does it say this? And that was older version. You know, you know the Greek Septuagint was, was written as a result of, of Alexander the Great, right? That was, you know, because he, Greek, Greece had, had conquered um, Egypt and, and all. And so the Septuagint is supposedly, they say, that means 70. They took all these 70 Jewish scholars. They said 72, but they called it the Septuagint. These scholars, Jewish scholars, just scholars to translate the Old Covenant. So that was, that would have been before the King James and all this, all the other things that we read now. So Paul would have been closer to that than we are. So I'm going to trust, like for example, if I, would, I would trust you who live next to, like if you were my neighbor and you said something about, like, about my house, something, like somebody was driving by my house, or somebody from California called me and started telling me, oh, somebody's driving around your house. I think I would trust you who were closer to me. So I'm going to trust somebody who's closer to the event or to the occurrence than somebody who's further back and saying something, and then you're taking it and you're running with it. Amen? Amen. So we're talking about the seed. I, I mentioned something. Like, um, I want to read in Isaiah 11, but let's, in Genesis 38, this is, we talked about the seed b before we went into the, this deception part of the, of the day of the Lord. Genesis 38. And it's interesting because we're, we're talking about, and I shared this before, and I don't know if everybody's as clear on this as I am or have been, through the Holy Spirit's help, is that the Yahweh follows his bloodline, and he doesn't like his seed being corrupted. That's what you found in Genesis chapter 6, where it says that the B'nai Elohim, or the sons of God, started mating up with the women. 
And then it mentions specifically something about Noah. It says he was, he was basically righteous and unblemished. And when I looked up the Hebrew word, basically that meant his bloodline or his DNA was unblemished or uncorrupted. And all these other people, it says they were corrupted. And so Yahweh had a problem with this corrupting something he created. See, you, you have to remember that there's an enemy that's been out there all along, of the enemy of deception, and the same enemy who said, I will be like the Most High God. So what, he, what is he doing? He can't create, so what he can do is corrupt. So even the seed's here, so now I'm going to corrupt the seed, and it'll be my seed. It says in Genesis 3.15 that he has seed. It says that your, your seed will, will have enmity or be at war with, with Yahweh's seed. So he, but he doesn't, he had to follow Yahweh's process. Yeah. He, but he wants to be like him, yet he's following his process. And so Yahweh has always been, been very protective of his seed because his seed he knew was how things were going to get accomplished. Because we read that in Genesis 1, he created everything with seed bearing so that it can multiply. He's all about the multiplication. He says, so everything has seed in itself. And that's how you multiply. Yet the enemy is trying to, to corrupt that whole process. I'm going to do cloning. I'm going to do whatever splicing. I'm going to do gene editing. I want to change the seed because obviously Yahweh didn't do enough when he created the seed. So check this out. In Genesis chapter 38, verse 6. It says in... Verse 6, Genesis chapter 38, I'm reading from the King James. It says, And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, listen to, to this, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass that when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled him on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing that he, which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. Isn't it interesting? <coughs> Judah is where the lion of the tribe of Judah was coming from. Mm -hmm. Judah, if we read in Genesis, when Joseph, Jacob was blessing, he says, the scepter will never pass from Judah. Yeah. And here, Judah, some of his offspring, is trying to corrupt or prevent the seed process. And the Lord said, no, that's not going to happen. Because the seed has to come through where the, the lineage that I just declared. Right. The enemy was all in there trying to prevent. You wonder why this story is in here, didn't you? Well, let's show you that Yahweh always yep. protects his seed. So his sons weren't going to do the right thing and, and keep the seed process going. And his other son was too, too young. And so what happens? Yahweh said, okay. He says, I know you, Judah. <laughs> he said, let's see, let's see what happens. Lead a little further. Verse 12. And in the process of time, Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up to, unto his sheep shearers to Timnath, he and his friend Hira, the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. And she put her widow's garments off from her, covered her with a veil, wrapped herself, sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timnath. For she saw that Shelah was grown. That was the, um, the son of Judah that he was supposed to give so that he could raise up a child to her, right? Mm -hmm. Was grown. And uh, it says, uh, what happened? Where you made me? When Judah, uh, 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 oh, she was not given unto him to wife. Or he was, yeah. When Judah saw her, saw Tamar, he thought her to be a harlot because she had covered her face. He turned unto her by the way and said, go, I pray, go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What will thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Will thou give me a pledge till thou send it? He said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, Thy signet, thy bracelets, and thy staff that is in thy hand. And he gave it to her and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. And she arose and went away and laid by her veil from her and put on the garments of her widowhood. And you know where it's going, don't you? <laughs> Yahweh protects his seed. Judah is supposed to be the lineage that the Messiah was supposed to come through. So you might think you're going to not do what he said. You know, she probably, you know, Yahweh could have made it look like no matter what she put on, he would have been drawn to her. 
<laughs> you know, she put on to make it look like she probably didn't have to dress up. She, she, he probably wouldn't recognize it, but said, I, I, oh, "Give me the, give me the bracelets." Or <laughs> you know, he just went in because he didn't know that Yahweh was protecting his seed. So we talked about that, and and we talked about the deception, the the deceptive that the enemy has been trying to through deceit, deception, lies, yeah. to overturn the will of the Father. Because he knows the day of the Lord is coming. Yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if you read again, when if you read, I think it's Genesis forty-eight, where where Jacob is is blessing all his sons, you'll see that he says, and which comes after this. Matter of fact, this is in the middle of of the story of what happened with Joseph. I don't, know, you know, again, it's like inserted in there. It's, I, I, don't, I don't know the reason, but it's interesting that it would be inserted in there because Joseph was sent into, Jews, into Egypt, and now that you see this story of Yahweh protecting the sea. This is even before they went into Egypt, but Joseph is there. Yeah. I mean, uh, Joseph is in Egypt, but Jacob and, and his family isn't yet. And you see this story, what's happening behind the scenes. Yeah. And then when you get to Genesis, I believe, 48, when, when Jacob knows he's dying and he starts to to bless all his sons, and he's and he and again, he says the scepter will not depart from Judah. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. And and again, I don't know why it was Judah, but I just think it's significant that that Judah equals praise. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Praise God. Again, I don't know if that's significant, but Judah equals praise. So I want to. I was going to read Genesis 11, but I don't think I'm going to read that yet. Let's talk about again. We're talking about deception, deception, and how does the enemy use deception? A lot of times he comes to us with words of deceit, right? And if words, if you don't know what what they mean, really mean, you can get deceived a lot easier. Like for example. Um, Again, we're talking about God's lineage, and and it's how many times have things changed? Where uh, just like just like here, we've been black, Negroes, colored, African American, Afro, whatever, uh, other N words, oh. other stuff. You know, we've been a lot of things, things change, but they always know who you're talking about when when you throw these words out there, boy, you know, all kind of stuff, yeah. right? So why, why, were, why do we have all these different names, all these different monikers? We even call ourselves different things. But um, dog, homie, you know, different things we call ourselves. I think about Israel. First of all, Israel was Jacob, right? Started out as Jacob. Yes. And then Yahweh changed his name to Israel. Yes. And then Israel went from being Israel to being the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Yeah. So you start, it started out as Jacob, then it went to Israel, mm -hmm. then the, the enemy got in and he split up the kingdom, so you got the northern kingdom was called Israel, southern kingdom was called Judah. Yeah. Huh. And you find that where they split, that was in, well, they split when, uh, when, J, when, when Solomon um, died and his son Jer Jeroboam. You find that in 1 Kings chapter 12, Verse 16 through 33. And um, it's interesting because what happened, let's turn that real quick. We're still on this, but let's turn that real quick. I didn't think I was going to do that, but uh, we'll turn that. First Kings 12. Verse 16, it says, the kingdom divided. So when you read that, they'll say, when, so when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, what portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. That was um, Solomon's son. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones, and he died. Therefore King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. Well, here's what happened. Solomon died. Re Rehoboam 
asked his Solomon's counselors, he says, you know, how should I treat the people so that I can do well? And, he, and they told him. He said, do like your father did, blah, 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 blah. And then he had some younger friends. His younger friend said, no, man, he says, you, you got to show them who's boss. He said, when they said this is a problem, you do, you do a heavier punishment on them. This is what his friends told him. And so instead of listening to elder wisdom, he decided to listen to his friends, and this is what happened, the result. This is why there was a split. Do you think that could have been deception? Do you think the enemy could have been there? Exactly. Why? Because he doesn't want he didn't want Yahweh's plans to plans to succeed. And if you read in John chapter four, let's turn to John chapter four. And you can read the rest of that on your own. First Kings chapter twelve, verse sixteen through thirty three. You can read that later on on your own. Let's turn to John chapter four real quick quickly. We're talking about deception. And in deception there's there's always a bit of truth. There's got to be a bit of truth or else you won't be deceived. If it doesn't look like it's right, yes. you know what I'm saying? Like, if, I, if I'm a wolf, I need to be in sheep's clothing to get you. Right. I might even call myself a pastor, but I'm a wolf yeah. in sheep's clothing. Yeah. <laughs> I might call myself prophet. And I might have a, a business card showing you my title. But not tell, you know, so, and looking like, sounding like, but really, I'm a wolf. I need to, but I need to look like a sheep so you can get close. Mm -hmm. Smell like a sheep so you get close. Because if you start getting close, you start smelling. Man, I smell wolf. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I need you to, I need you to, yeah. to totally buy into me being a sheep. Right. Yeah. So I can get you. That's what the enemy does. He, he gets them, people like that. That's why we need to go with the Word. We need to, to always listen to the Holy Spirit. When, matter of fact, if I'm stop in a commercial right now, is especially you on YouTube, Zoom, and in the room, you need to read the word for yourself. I know I'm sharing things and, and I study and all, but I don't care. You need to read the word. The same word, if I give you the scripture, you need to go and make sure the Holy Spirit gives you the truth. Because I know in part. I prophesy in part. I don't know it all. And I'm willing to admit that. You need to find out from the one who knows it all. Read that word. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. So anyway, John chapter 4, we just were reading about what happened with the, with, when the kingdom, um, uh, uh, when the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom split. So John chapter 4, listen to this. This is based on that as well. But John chapter 4. Um, verse 3. He left Judea, so he wasn't, he wasn't in Judea. He left and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then he came to a, be a, he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was here. Yeshua, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yeshua said unto her, Give me to drink, for his disciples were going away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew or a Yehudi, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Do you know, we can read further on, but we, and we will, I want to read something else too. But, you know, Israel was called Samaria. It was called Ephraim, it was called Samaria. And in Ezra chapter 4, you'll see where, where the king sent other people into Samaria. To, and they mingled with the, the Israelites were there. So she is of that lineage, but she was of a, of a bastardized religion. See, when, when, what happened when they split, when you were, were read in 1 Kings chapter 12, when Israel split from Judah, Israel, the, the king Jeroboam, or Jeroboam, with those names, they both are kings, one's Israel, one's Judah. What he did is the one that split and took Israel, he decided to set up a different city in worship, a different manner of worship, and it was, it was evil. Yeah. And you can read that. You'll read it in 1 Kings chapter 12. And this is what we're reading. This is, this is the result of it. Yeah. So this woman is now a Samaritan who the true or the, or the Israelites who continued with the word won't have any dealings with them because it's corrupted. Their, word, their seed was corrupted. But even though they were of the lineage of, of Israel, but not Judah, they were some of the other tribes. Yeah. You see, here you go. Let's go, uh, verse 10. Actually, verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaritan, 
How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Yeshua answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of Yahweh, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me the drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? And listen to this. This is curious. Verse 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof, and his children, and his cattle? How come Yeshua didn't tell her that she, that wasn't her father? How can you say that Jacob wasn't your father? Because he was. Because the children of Israel, their seed was corrupted. That didn't mean they still didn't come from Jacob. And that's why later on, where she talks about, and she's still talking about the same thing. She said, our father, verse 20, our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. That's what happened with when, the, when there was a split because of deception, the enemy. He's trying to, he said, look, we're going to worship. You see, he doesn't mind you worship, just don't worship Yahweh. Uh -huh. yeah. He don't mind you worshiping. He don't mind you being religion, religious. Mm -hmm. Just don't be in relationship right. with Yahweh. Yeah. Be religious as you want. Right. The Pharisees were religious. Yep. The Sadducees were religious. The scribes were religious. But none of them were in relationship. You can be, and that's why when people start talking about, you know, they're religious and stuff like that, and they want to ascribe religion to me, I just let them talk, you know. But I don't, I don't uh, read my press. They say, oh, you're such a good man, all that stuff. I know me. I know a good man. And his name ain't Larry. It's Yeshua HaMashiach. So you can be religious, but anyway, she said, she said, um, she says, yeah, our fathers were worshipped in this mountain. You say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship, because that's where that's how Yahweh had set it up. But they worship differently. And Jesus, Yeshua said unto a woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. And the fact that she knew the Messiah was coming that shows that they knew some stuff. You know, when, that's why she went and said to the people, and, and then why would Yeshua say, when, when they asked him to stay, if you keep reading in John chapter 4, he, they asked him to stay two more days. And he said earlier on, he says, I've come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need to, sometimes history tells us things, and the Bible tells us things, if we let the Bible tell us things. Yeah. But if we read the Bible, and we, and we heard what people told us about the Bible, and we read it, I think we're going to go astray. When we read the Bible, we need to act like we don't know what it's saying and let the Holy Spirit tell us what it's saying. Yeah. And when he shows you things like that, this is what happens. You start, oh, this makes sense. He shows you, oh, this is, relates to 1 Kings chapter 12. This is why Yeshua is talking to her. Because his disciples are like, where are they talking? Why is he talking to, her? to this Samaritan woman? Because the Samaritan woman was from their father Jacob. And he's here for the house of Israel, the lost house of Israel. Again, deception. So the fact that even here they could be lost doesn't mean they, they couldn't be lost in America or, or, or in the, on the Western Hemisphere. No, they only got to be lost over in Europe. So anyway, we're talking about some, some how words throw us off. So that word, even that Samaritan, that word Samaria, is threw, threw people off. Northern Kingdom it became Samaria, and it became Ephraim. Then the southern kingdom stopped from being the southern kingdom and became Judah. And then Judah became a Jew. And Jew became Semitic. All those words, all those words are just words. We need to know what is Semitic. You know, if you look up, even you look up anti-Semitic, that word is, the definition has nothing to do with people being Semitic. As a matter of fact, think about this. If I put a suffix on something, and I've said this before, like if, 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 you know, if I put ish on the, on the end of my name, he's Larry-ish. What you're saying is he acts like, kind of like Larry. But he ain't Larry. And you put I-S-H on something. Okay. That's the suffix to say it's similar to. It's like they've converted. So they're ish. I know. It's kind of uncomfortable, isn't it? You know why? Because it's, because when 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 the scalpel of truth 
start slicing away deception, it's uncomfortable. Because women, I believe this. My mother believes this. My father believes this. People told, people told me this. We know in part. Yeah. We prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come. See, here's what's happening. The perfect one is starting to, he, he says, in the last days, knowledge is going to be increased. Yes. He's going to start to pull the veil. You know, increasing knowledge, sometimes sometimes increasing knowledge is, 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 is moving away the, the falsehood. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it could have been here. Like, for example, here's what's been here all along. Electricity has always been here. True. But until things were removed to show you how to <laughs> conduct the electricity, we couldn't utilize electricity. Right. But it was here. Mm -hmm. this, this information has been here all along. But things are now starting to be removed. And so now they're being removed. And we're like, oh, that feels a little bit uncomfortable. Because I was comfortable here. Why am I bringing this up? Again, because we're in the last days. And if you're going to continue to, to, to follow the world and not follow the word, then you, you could be a candidate for when it says there will be a great falling away. Yep. Amen. Because if you're looking, like I said, now I'll say this again. We talk about, oh, we got to bless Israel, bless Israel. Show me how, how much better our country is now since 1948. Mm -hmm. Think of the wars we've had since 1948. Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iraq again, the war on poverty, the war on drugs, Jim Crow. alphabet community, treating, you know, teaching our kids in school, the um, abortions, over 70 million kids killed. You know, recently I saw where they were showing a video of the moment, I probably shouldn't do it, but I'll do it. The yeah. moment where the sperm hits the egg, hits the egg uh -huh. it was a flash of light. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah, yep. that's what it is. Yeah, we've killed over 70 million yeah. flashes of light. Wow. And it says that Yahweh has to, hates the shedding of innocent blood, and he protects his seed. Mm -hmm. Yet we're blessed because we support Israel. Mm -hmm. Suppose we've been supporting the wrong people, mm -hmm. thinking we're blessed. Mm -hmm. Look how blessed we are. Look at our two candidates for president, because we're blessed. Mm -hmm. Go to the gas station. Buy eggs, buy bread, because you're blessed. I'm just saying, when I say that, how much it costs now? Right. Because we're so blessed. Look at the BRICS nations starting to elevate the prominence over our blessed nation. Mm -hmm. We're so blessed, we have, we have to have soldiers on every continent mm -hmm. because we're blessed. Because you're always protecting us. We got soldiers, but we have to have soldiers in every continent, on, on almost every country, because we're so blessed. Because we bless Israel. Yet we have persecuted people that look like Yeshua mm -hmm. and Yahweh, mm -hmm. yeah. who came from the west coast of Africa, where it says the kingdom of Judah. But we're blessed. So that's why I'm not really worried about who we vote for. Because Yahweh has his own will in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, that's right. And no matter what, what happens, we need to pray. Pray for whoever goes into office and pray for yourselves. Mm -hmm. yes. Because the day of the Lord is coming. It says it comes like a thief in the night. It comes when, when you think it's not coming. Right. It looks like things... You know, think, oh, things are good. Like, say, for example, we get the, you know, like the president that comes in and, and they're like, and, you know, whatever. things are going to be good now because this president's here. And the day of the Lord could come like a thief in the night. Sometimes I'm thinking maybe I should pray, ask them to delay, give the Eagles a chance to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> 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 that way it'd be a long time. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Give the Sixers a chance to win the national oh, the championship. Yeah, 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, no. It's, it's, I just I wanted to, to bring that out that there's a lot of deception that this goes concurrent with the last days. Why to get you off your game, get you not to believe, to get you to fall away. Yeah. Again, and we, we haven't even gotten to the scriptures yet, but he said Yeshua when he's asked by his disciples, the closest people to him here, people who spent three and a half, three years with in Jesus University. <coughs> they're in the university. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jesus. And they're like, well, okay, well, right tell us when, when it's going to be the last days. Yeah. And uh, before he started listing out this, this prescription, this, you know, these, these things, he says, he says, before I list out what's going to happen, let me tell you, do not be deceived. Right. So I'm going to tell you what's, what's going to happen, but first thing you need to know is, is, is you have to, in yourself, you have to not be deceived because things are going to happen. You know, people saying, in my name this and my name that and, 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 and all. But, uh, but do not be deceived. And what we were talking about, deception with the day of the Lord. Yeah. And that's why we're talking about this. And that's why I brought this out. You know, some of this stuff is, like I said, it's, it's, um, some of it's un maybe slightly uncomfortable to some people because, you know, but you're going to, you know, because, oh, you're going against these people. I'm not going against anybody. I told you over and over that just because you convert, it, that not, be, but not because, but if you convert, you're to be treated just like anybody else. Same thing in, in Christianity. It says, it says, if you belong to Christ, you're Abraham's seed and an heir according to the promise. That's right. He had that same promise in the beginning in Exodus 12, verse 45 through 49, yeah. where he said, if they're willing to be circumcised and follow the law, they're to be treated just like anybody else. Right. But that doesn't mean they're from the seed. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the, the delineation. Yahweh protects his seed. He, he, he's, he's, he's marked his seed. That's why he said, it'll be a sign upon you forever. And it, but because we, we, we've been brainwashed into thinking, because somebody just said this. Somebody said, oh, where are the children of Israel? They just said it. They, they didn't have any proof. They just said they were. Mm -hmm. And so at that time in, in the 8th, 9th century, when they said that, people, okay, they were lost. Now we know, now we know where they are. No, I'm just saying, it's just what happened. And yet we have people that have done DNA studies and found out that the majority of them have no lineage at all into Israel. The majority. Not all. Some of them do. Again, because that matches the scripture. The scripture says in Luke 21, he says, you will be led captive into every nation. Captive. That's a key word. Who is led captive into nations? Who is led captive into every nation? That's, that's key. So you let the scripture tell you instead of people tell you. Yeah. If the scripture, no, I'm serious. Always go with the scripture. Yep. Because people people are wrong. People can be wrong, not on purpose. Just because they, they heard what they heard. They heard somebody else who heard. Or heard from somebody who heard. Right. Who heard from somebody who heard. But I go with the word. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Right. I go with the word. Yeah. And also, this isn't, like I said, it's inclusion, not exclusion. But the, the, the reason why I'm bringing this out is because we're in, I believe, in the last days. And the last days, the, one of the markers is deception. And so by uncovering deception, anything that the enemy puts out there, I oppose. And so he, he put things out there. And so I'm opposing it. How do I oppose it? By the word. Just like, that's why I shared the word, these scriptures that I shared. Because it's word. That's more important than, than any allegory or, or thing that came up. The word is more important. So follow the word. And we, yeah. we got way more. We're going we're gonna to get to Isaiah 11. We'll read, hopefully we'll read that the next time. Because And you can read that before. And you can read it with an understanding that things may not be the way you understood. If you read Isaiah 11, there's a whole bunch of other scriptures that, that go along with that as well. But I would just start there. You read Isaiah 11, 11 and because it talks about the day in that day and so if it's in that day and he still said and he said this is what's going to happen then that means it hasn't happened mm -hmm. if you read that you'll find it if he says in that day 
when basically the day of the Lord, when he says in that day, there's some things he says is going to happen. You'll see in Isaiah 11 mm -hmm. and other scriptures we're going to pull out. Yep. But in that day, it's going to happen and that day hasn't happened yet. So that means that hasn't happened. Yes, so I'm going with the word. Amen. Consistently. Amen. So I'm going to stop there and uh, hope you got something out of it today. But uh, I want to I want to show before just before I close out with especially you on YouTube and, and Zoom as well. I want to encourage you. I encourage you just a few minutes ago about make sure you read the word and 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 to get around people that are teaching the word. Read the Bible, listen to the Holy Spirit. That, that's encouraging. But the other encouragement is I want you everybody here to know that that Yahweh not just loves you. He's he supports you, and it, it, the, here's something I really want you to be aware of. You can do everything, anything that he's destined you to do through Christ. Whatever he's called you to do, you can do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He strengthens us. You may not feel like you're strong, but if you get up, you'll find the strength that he's put in you. He's placed strength in you. It may not seem like it. You may, you may, I mean, every part of you might say, you know what, I just don't want to get up. I just don't want to try this again. I've tried this over and over. I don't even want to say this prayer again. I've said this prayer so many times. I don't want to, I don't have to write this check again. I don't want to, I don't have to witness to this person again. I don't want to have to, whatever again. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You just have to make up your mind that you can do it. Remind yourself that that scripture is true. I can do everything, all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you can get back up again, and you can do that prayer again. You can walk that walk again. You can talk that talk again. Yeah. You can pay that bill again. You can trust God to, to give you the resources again. Just because it happened, you, you, you thought you were done. You, you thought you were done, but listen, that prophet, he was, he was getting fed by the ravens. And then all of a sudden it was done. But he wasn't done. Yahweh said, okay, now you go here. And then this widow was able to sustain him. So you can do it. You can do it. Whatever he's told you to do, get back up. I encourage you to get back up. Yeah. And you can do it. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, yeah. I say and I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.